You are there guys, this is Dale of Blown Wombat Airsoft and today we're taking a look at the Maruzen Walther P99 licensed by Humorex. As always with these reviews, annotations can be found on either side of me. They're just going to take you to whichever specific part of the video you want to find out about. So say you want to find what the first impressions were or skip straight to the summary if you're so inclined, anything like that. Just click on those and it'll go straight ahead to it. And with that out of the way, we'll go straight into the review. So design started on the original handgun in 1994 and was made by German manufacturer Walther. Uh, the final product was released in 1997 and could be chambered in either 9x19mm Parabellum or 40 Smith & Wesson. Uh, over its lifespan the gun has seen service with numerous police and military forces around the world and in cinema is most notable for being the bigger brother to James Bond's weapon of choice, the PPK, and appears in a series from Tomorrow Never Dies to Casino Royale. Um, in the airsoft version, the one created by Maruzen just here depicts the first generation of the handgun as can be told by the little ski hump at the bottom of the trigger guard just here. It's a mainly polymer based gun on the bottom with a plastic top slide and comes with a single 24 round magazine. It has all the features of the real steel such as the safety, the slide lock and the decocking lever at the back as well as the little tab to tell you whether the slide's locked back or not. Um, I personally bought this gun from Crafty's Airsoft in Derby for around £100 but I can't be quite sure of the mark as it was a fair amount of months ago when I originally got this gun so don't quote me on that. Um, I will however include a link to their website so if they do restock in the future you can have a gander and see what price they're putting up there. So when you order your Maruzen P99 it's going to turn up in this little tidy box just here. Nothing particularly special about it but it serves its purpose quite well. Um, inside as well as the handgun and the single magazine you also get these components here which form a sort of speed loader. Now the idea is that you rest the black half of it on top of the mag itself, fill the white tube with BBs and there's a secondary half that uses a plunger to push the BBs into the mag. Personally I've never had much use for it, I just use a normal speed loader but it's nice to have regardless. You also get a single allen key which is the right size for the hop up so when you want to adjust that and also you get your standard bag of rubbishy BBs. Don't use these, seriously just get some high quality BBs and use those with the gun instead. So the first thing you're going to notice when you pick the handgun up is just how comfortable it is to hold. It really sits into my hand quite well and fits quite snugly, mainly due to the ergonomic grip. The slide as well quite, sounds quite authentic when you rack it back and forth, even though it is a polymer plastic gun it does have metal internal components. And the blowback is very crisp as well and it's got just enough recoil to make it realistic but not throw your aim off whilst you're using it with rapid follow-up shots. Um, you can get some optional extras with these. The first one that I picked up, which I really suggest you do, is the 40 rounds extended mag. It just adds an extra 16 shots to your gun every time you use it. And it's only slightly more bulkier and weighty so if you get spare mags I suggest you get these. It's just a lot more practical than the standard mags. Um, there's also a pistol carbine kit available. I've Never personally been a fan of those things, but I've heard that it works well and it's made from the same materials as this, so it's going to feel good as well. So if you're into your pistol carbines, that's available. Um, now, the most things that um, I really wanted when I got a pistol was, can I put a silencer on it? Now, the answer is sort of yes, but good luck trying to do that. The main problem is that um, the inner barrel just here, it's not threaded. So you can't put an aftermarket suppressor straight onto the thing. Um, you can buy a kit which replaces the outer barrel which uh, gives you one with a thread on it and has a suppressor included but good luck trying to find one of those because I've been looking for months and I've only found reference of it in a site in Ireland and even that was out of stock so the option is there but have fun trying to find one of them because I wasn't able to. So we're going to take a look at some of the features of the gun. Now the first one I need to point out is the safety. What it is is this little square on both sides of the gun here, you've got a pair of them. Uh, if you want to engage the safety you just push in the right hand side and what that's going to do is it's going to lock off the trigger after the half pull so it can't engage and fire. Um, what I like about this is you can have a, an empty gun, engage the safety, put the mag in, rack a shot in and it still won't fire. It's always nice to have a fully working safety that has no reach bands for it so there's no way of getting past that once the safety is engaged. You take it off by pressing in the left hand side of the button just there. Um, another thing about the safety is it also serves to help in taking the top half of the gun away. So this only works if you have the mag out and you have the gun cocked. Now what you need to do then is grab both sides of the safety tabs and pull them directly downward. Now what that's going to do is allow you to slide the top half of the gun off and access the slide itself. 
Um, whilst I've got this off, I might as well point out the hop-up is located just here. Now, obviously it's a little bit fiddly because whenever you want to adjust the hop-up, you have to take the slide off the gun and you have to do that every single time to make little adjustments. Um, as a hop-up itself, it serves its purpose perfectly well. I've had no other complaints with it other than it's fiddling. Um, to get the slide back on, what you need to do is see the two grooves on either side of the handgun just here. You line up the top half of the slide and you can slide it on like that. Now, depending on whether the gun is feeling nice, this can be really easy or it can be a bit of a bitch. Uh, one way that I've noticed that helps to put the slide back on is if you grab the shell ejection cover just here and put some upward force on it, what that's going to do is hold the inner components slightly upward so they're less likely to catch on anything. So if you put a bit of upward pressure on that, slide it on all the way and just rack it back to make sure that it is actually in position. If you then pull the trigger halfway, that's just going to put the safety back in its normal position and the slide's not going anywhere. Now, once you have racked the slide back, you'll notice that the little red tab at the back is going to poke outwards of the gun. This indicates that the gun is cocked and ready to fire, which is a nice little feature because you might have the safety off or on and you can't tell if the gun's ready to go. That little tab will tell you. Um, you've also got a decocking button on the top part of the gun just here, so if you want to decock the gun without firing a shot, you can just press this little button here, make a nice little click, and what that's going to do is make that tab vanish inside the gun, indicating that it is now safe. Uh, a couple of extra features of the gun itself is the slide lock at the back just here. Now, so once you've got the slide lock back, say you've run out of ammo, you put a new mag in, you want the slide to go forwards, you just push this down, and that's going to send the slide forwards. You've also got the mag release, which is these twin tabs at the bottom of the trigger guard just here. So whether you're right-handed or left-handed, you just push downwards on there, that's going to send the mag out. Um, in terms of reliability then, now I've had several problems with this handgun. It saved my skin on a couple of times, but for every time it has, it's done something that's really irritated me or got me killed. Um, the main one is something that in the real fire world, in the real world of firearms, is called the outer battery malfunction, which is kind of ironic for a gas gun, but there you go. What this means is that uh, the slide is going to lock in a position where it's not entirely forward. So you fire a shot, the slide doesn't return all the way, and so you can't fire a second one. Now, as you can imagine, this means you can't fire the gun, and so in a close quarters environment, this could potentially mean that you're taking a quick walk back to the regen point. Um, it's an easy enough problem to fix. All you need to do is just give it a quick tap on the back of the slide to send it forwards all the way, but it's going to cost you a second or two when you realise that there's a problem, it's not firing, and what that problem is, and in the CQB environment, that can be fatal. Um, a second thing, which isn't a problem as such, but it's the big cause of it, is that this gun hates the cold weather with a passion. Um, I know this is a trait shared by all gas guns, as obviously the colder gas gets, the less reactive it is and the less force it has behind it, but this one in particular has a lot of malfunctions in the cold weather. Um, it's been cases where there's not enough gas going to the slide, so when, it's, when you fire the shot, the slide goes back and it doesn't have enough to send it forward, so it just locks in the back position. I've got a clip showing that off just here. Fuck's sake! issue that it could possibly have is that uh, when you pull the trigger it just dumps the entire gas load out the front of the barrel that's something else that's happened on a number of occasions in other words try and avoid using this gun in the cold it really really does not like it um, the mags themselves I've had no problems with them up until the very last game before I did this review where they were leaking at the start of the game um, they were easily fixed by putting in some Abbey maintenance gas but they um, did start to leak for the first few games of the day again, mainly due to the cold weather, but as the games went on, they um, fixed themselves. So whilst they're not leaking as such, uh, I don't think the cold helped, but uh, the Abbey maintenance gas certainly solved the problem. So overall, it's not a particularly reliable gun, which is something that you really don't want in a sidearm. I mean, a sidearm, by its very definition, is supposed to be a reliable backup. Unfortunately, this isn't it. So when I was last at MCG The Journey in Rutland, I managed to get a chrono test done with this gun. Now the test was taken at the start of a cold day, indoors however, with a 0 0.2 gram DB. So, 0.2s. So I started about 217, it's gone down to about 214. As can be seen from the chrono test, the power started off around about the 270 mark, but with every shot was gradually decreasing around about 240. 
Um, obviously, this is because the gas is uh, there's less in the reservoir with every shot, so the next one's going to be less powerful. Some guns are more consistent than others, but um, it is to be expected with a gas handgun in general. Now, uh, it's worth noting again that it was a cold day, so it should be a little more powerful than that chrono test was reading, but regardless of the site or what month I was playing in, it's never had trouble passing chrono tests. Also, when I was at the jail, I managed to get in a shooting test with this gun. Now, usually the tests are taken at 30 metres, but I took this one at 20 because I wasn't entirely convinced that I could hit a 30 metre target with just a handgun. I was lying prone when I was doing it and using the extended mag to balance the gun on the ground, but since it's a handgun, I'm not entirely sure it made the world a difference, but I tried to make it as accurate as possible. So as we can see from the test, around about half the shots actually managed to connect with the target. They were a bit too wide to say what an, a particular pattern was, it could have been just pop luck to be honest. But it's always good to know that even though handguns are most designed for across the room situations, even at 20 metres you can hit a man sized target with reasonable accuracy, even if you might not have much control over whereabouts you hit him. So, where do you want to be on the airsoft field to get the absolute most out of this gun? Well, obviously because it's a handgun, the best place suited for it is CQB arenas. Obviously, the short engagement ranges and tight corners will mean that the lightweight and low profile make this gun really come into its own. If you're running this as a primary in a CQB arena though, I do recommend you take some of the extended mags with you, as because although you've got speed and agility on your side, ammo count is definitely against you, so make sure you take some extended mags with you. Uh, but what if it's your backup weapon and you're in a, a normal SO field, maybe you're outdoors or in the indoor area with long corridors, what would you want to do with that? Well, that really depends upon whether the enemy has seen you or not. If you've managed to stay under their radar and you're outdoors, I recommend you just dive into the greenery as much as you can and use all the shrubbery to hide your position because you don't have to worry about a long barrel getting tangled on anything. You can get really down and deep in the dirt and to try and stay out of people's sightline and then take them by surprise. If they have seen you, however, then I really hope you've got some legs on you. The best way to take someone down with a handgun is to close the distance. You need to be charging, not straight at them, try and zigzag so you present a harder target to hit, but stay light, stay mobile, and try and get right up in their face as they can. Most players do not expect a, a mad bull rush, and it can sometimes make them panic and miss you to panic fire. So if you can pull that off, by all means, charge your enemy. Um, it's a very high risk, high reward strategy however, but let's be honest, if your primary's gone down and you're relying on a handgun uh, outdoors, most people are going to be outranging you, They're, you're going to be massively outgunned, so you might as well get a mad rush in and who knows, maybe you might do something cool while you're trying to take the enemy down. So overall, I've really enjoyed my time in the Walther P99. It's something that fits quite snugly into my hands, so quite comfortable to use. And I've personally gone out of my way several times just to use the handgun over my primary, just because it's fun to do so. It allows you to do several things that a standard length airsoft rifle can't. Um, whenever you're stuck between a reload or you're medicking a teammate, it can save your skin, and for that I like it. But I do get the impression, however, that this is something that a handgun gives you, not this specific handgun. So I might find this with other um, shorter airsoft gas blowback handguns as well. Um, the whole point of a handgun is it's supposed to be a reliable backup weapon. This isn't 100% reliable. There's been a bit too many occasions where it's let me down when I really needed it, and so it has started to get a bit annoying, and for that I cannot recommend it, even though I have loved my time with it. Um, if you're dead set on a P99, however, it's not a crippling issue, it's just something that you need to be aware of, that you shouldn't really be taking it outdoors when it's winter, uh, otherwise you might suffer a bit more flaws than usual. However, if you are still interested in the P99, there are other options available, primarily the Maruzan fixed slide version. Now, what this does is it's going to be more powerful because it's a fixed slide. It already has an integrated suppressor, so you don't need to worry about that. And also, it's not going to suffer from the same kind of flaws and jams that this does because the slide doesn't move. So I highly think that that's going to be more reliable than this ever would be just because it doesn't suffer from the same problems. It can't. It's a fixed slide version. So if you're interested in the P99, maybe that's worth a look at. Um, overall though, I love the gun, but it's not reliable, so I unfortunately cannot recommend this even though I have a lot of my time with it. 
I do hope, however, that you have enjoyed this video review of the Marusen Walther P99. If you've got any questions you'd like to leave, feedback you'd like to give me, maybe you'd like to share your own experiences with this gun, just leave them in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this has been Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft. Watch out, Marshall! <laughs>